Next application is getting to this issue of what are numbers or integers, right? The numbers that we're interested in are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, etc. Right? Those are actual numbers. Now comes the question for 4.2, which is how do we represent them? Because this particular system that you see up above is called unary. Unary system is just simply ones. Representing numbers by ones. What do you have? One. What do you have? One, one. What do you have? One, one, one. <coughs> Right, just you actually see the true quantity. Right? Unary is just one, 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 one. Now, we we use unary all the time. Have you ever used it when people walk by and they say, Can you please count this for me? How many people have showed up today and they show up at random amounts? Do you sit there and do things like, Okay, five people came and then somebody comes in the door. Do you write this way? Do you go, Oh, five people, no wait, six, no wait, two more came, eight, is that how you write it? How do you normally write? What do you normally do on a unary system as people show up? You usually go, one person came, up oh, two more, up oh, two more, and then we do dun dun. The tally system with this cross. What does that cross tally do? It's still a tally, it's still a unary, but why do you cross it? It lets you count by fives. It lets you count by fives later, right? You start to group. So the first representation beyond unary is grouping. And the most natural one that we have is group out by fives and then count by fives, right? So we have unary, which is just a bunch of tallies. After unary, people move on to grouping. So if I did this, what is that? If I talk about Roman, what is VI? It's six, right? This was equal to one, two, three, four, five, six. What does the V represent? That tally root, right? What's an I represent? A unary. Except they got a little fancy. What if they wrote IV? They said that you had five but you took away one, and so we only have four left. Why did they do that? Why didn't they did? Why do they write that way? So like one, two, three makes sense. Why don't they just do four? Ah, oh, it's too many tallies. Just go, just go IV, and, and if it's before, it's subtraction. If it's after, it's plus, and then you have I's and V's and X's and L's. Right? We had Super Bowl XL. X was before the L. L's bigger, so it must be subtracted. What's L? 50. X is 10, so we're Super Bowl 40. It's like, oh, it's the extra large, right? But then now, now you're at Super Bowl L, and you're at Super Bowl 50, so I just got rid of it and said people get confused. Um, so they had grouping systems as they went through with it. Now, oops. Uh, fun ones are Egyptian. Egyptians had a tally mark for one. Then they would, from here on out, they did kind of what was natural, groups of tens. They had either, you would consider this a heel print or an ox harness for ten. Let's, all right, I'm going to put the numbers we understand underneath it. So that was one, that was ten. And then they had hundreds, which was a coiled rope for a hundred. And then they had thousand which was a lotus flower, doesn't look like a flower, 100, and then they would have a finger, oh, there's a fingernail right there, a Wait. pointing finger for a thousand. Wait, so we have two, 10, 100, oops, yeah, I'm writing it wrong, sorry, thousand, doo, doo, doo. can't even read my own writing below, no big surprise, nobody can read my writing, 10,000, and then 100,000 is either a frog or a tadpole, Gonna make a little tadpole. He's happy. Yay! And a hundred thousand. 
and then however you want to say this guy with his hands up in the air it's all astonished wow for a million either either an astonished man or a god had had his hands up in the air it's like oh wow that's crazy that's a million and so when you do this I was just grouping right so if I wanted to have a thousand I wanted to write 2005 what would you do two flowers five towels right and it didn't matter how you did it right they didn't and the Romans like before and after and they had this nice clean script for them they would put things in what looked pretty they would look at this and say oh let's do this and kind of make it look like a little pictorial thing and it's a number we just have to figure out what you're talking about by looking at the groups and so that's kind of a natural way of doing it uh, would you arithmetic's not too bad addition mm, just shove the groups together right until and then if you got enough you would go to the bigger group and addition would seem to work multiplication what do you think two flowers and uh, two spirals times a finger three dashes in a heel is wow that doesn't look like fun right it doesn't work well and so the question is but it wasn't too bad as long as you had particular signs now what happened after this is if you start to deal with a lot of math and you're dealing with a lot of numbers you ought to have a better representation that allowed computational techniques and from there the better representation you know, that took on after that was the idea of positional grouping. And also called base B expansion. They didn't call that dude. That's modern terms. All right, what is a base B expansion? A base B expansion is the number that you're talking about is how many b to the k's do you have how many b to the k minus ones do you have how many b's and then finally how many where the b's are greater than or equal to two the a sub i are greater than or equal to zero yet less than strictly less than b and the highest thing that you see has to at least exist we can't start off with zero and normally the way this is this expansion is written is typical notation is if you understand what b is position matters because it tells you how many your sizes are so we would rather write it like this ak ak minus one a one write the coefficients and then say what the base is so classic thing that everybody understands one comma two zero four what is this? This is actually written in, in the expansion. This is 1, 2, 0, 4, base 10. Where this position is how many 1's you have. This position is how many 10's you have. This position is how many 10's squared, which is hundreds. This is 10 cubes, thousands. And read it. Somebody read this for me. 1,204. Now, this actually gets to, because I didn't say, you know, if I would do something like, okay, 1, 2, 3, well, 1, 2, 3, 4, right? 1,230, three tens, 4, which is 4 ones, right? Notice the big difference between these two. 1,204, well, why didn't you say tens? Why would I say tens? There are none. It makes no sense to say it if it doesn't exist. But on the other hand, if you write it, if it's position, position matters, right? And so leaving it silent doesn't help us. Can you imagine the difficulty when they first had positional numbers and they didn't have a zero? And they wrote one, two, four. And they meant one, two, well, I don't have any of these. And then I have four. Well, how in the world would you figure it out? You would read it and hopefully get it out of context. But then they started to represent nothings, like in the Babylonians. So this is, you know, the Babylonians had a positional number system, but instead of base 10, it was base 60. So first position was ones. Second position was 60. 
next position is groups of what's 60 times 60? 3,600 and then 60 cubes and then 60 to the fourths you're like man that would be fun how many symbols would you need? in base 10 how many symbols do you need? you need 10 in base 60 how many symbols do you need? 60 but they only had 59 because they didn't have a zero so they developed a zero concept by putting a small little dot because they would make impressions in clay they would make a little dot to let people know there is actually nothing here and I'm skipping this spot it wasn't an idea of a zero it was please be silent it wasn't a fully they didn't fully comprehend it but we say exactly the positional numbers how you read it but on the other hand do we have to stay with base 10? Nope. We can use any base we want. So we can have numbers like, you know, a 1, 0, 1, 1 in base 2, or a, a 3, 7, 2, 1 in base 9. Okay, what does this mean? If I would write this in base 10, take the entire expansion, what does it mean? The first position is 1s. Next position, 2s, 4s, 8. So it says I have 1, 8, and no 4s, and 1, 2, and 1. And so if I would put this into base 10, going into base 10 is trivial. Just write it. What is that? That's 11, but please write it in base 10 notation. All right, what would be this in base? Uh, this position is what? Ones for two. What's in this spot? Nines. This is nine squareds. This is nine cubed. So I have three groups of nine cubed plus seven groups of nine squared plus two groups of nine plus one. So that is nines. That is nine squared. That is nine cubed. How would I, and then all you'd have to do is just simply multiply that all out to get to base 10. Sorry, I'm not good at nine cubes in my head. I should know that. Nine cubed is the same thing as three to the sixth, right? Three, nine, 27, sorry. Probably should do that quickly. I'm being lazy. But you can take that out, going to base 10 is trivial. How do we go the other way? So is everybody okay with, if I give you any base, could you write it in base 10? Now why is it, this is kind of an interesting feature of numbers, a bunch of dots, humans are so interesting, a bunch of dots means nothing until you name it. If I give you a bunch of dots, it's just a bunch of dots, well that's 1,231, okay. Now I feel good, right, it's odd, right? But what you did is you mentioned the grouping sizes. Well, different cultures have different comforts, right? It's like if, they, if it's a base 8 culture and they wrote things down, yeah, they'd have that, they would have whatever words that they would have for it, they would know what it means. But for us, we don't, we can, I can write this thing down. I, what do you have? I have 3721 in base 9. <laughs> that doesn't help me. <laughs> Give me what it is, like in base 10, and all of a sudden you're like, oh, now I know what that is. That's kind of odd, but that's just the way we...